let's get started right into the project. Uh, this is Future State Batman, and if you've got this figure, well, you know, it's very simply made. There's not a whole lot going on here, but that plastic cape, well, it's got to go. This is also a commission piece, and this is a cape that I've already cut ahead of time to show in the video, and I'll show you in just a moment what happened. This is actually the first cape. I ended up making two capes. But as you can tell, I've already folded over the edge at the top. I've already made the pleats with the iron so I can follow the line and do the stitching. And the stitching will be on the outside. Now I plan on using those black strips at the top to make a pocket for the wire on the inside. And it just didn't work out for me. I, I couldn't get it correct. So I had to recut this same pattern make the same scallops there's actually a total of nine scallops four on each side in the center making nine and of course i then repleted my actual lines to the edge of the scallop and i had to re-sew it and this time i went ahead and added a liner on the inside a second color to actually extend those pockets but this is, was my plan earlier and I found out that the iron-on glue doesn't take very well to the shiny side of the pleather, only to the cloth side. And I wanted to hide it, but I ended up making a mess. I ended up sewing too many holes in the cape, and it was a disaster. And I'll show you that in just a moment. So I had to redo this, started from scratch. And that's very typical. When making capes, you're not going to get it right on the first one. So as I mentioned, I ended up cutting a second. This is the second cape. I now placed a pleather on the inside that is even thinner, but it's got a shiny surface to it, more like a sparkle surface. And of course, I've already done all the other work that needs to be done to it. This is the first one, as I mentioned, and it's just a mess. It just didn't work out. I tried very hard to make it work out and I ended up making it worse every time I went back to make corrections. The sewing machine wasn't cooperating properly and I just ended up totally destroying these stitchings that go on the outside. And of course that pocket that I sewn into the inside, uh, yeah, nah, that's kind of a mess. I can't have it go out that way and I certainly don't want it for myself either. So as I mentioned, I put in a whole other layer at the top, well on the inside, leaving a pocket open to add the wires into those pockets that I'm going to sew into it. And now let's do the stitching. And somebody did mention that I should show the tools that I most commonly use. For cape making, this is what I most commonly use. These two pliers, a wire cutter, needle nose pliers that are bent at an angle so I can grab onto that wire and insert it. And of course, the standard 24 gauge wire and this has become my favorite cutting tool and this is a rotary blade these things are expensive but when these new blades are inserted they cut cloth like butter and you can find them at any of your fabric stores or even your walmart this is what the cape should look like when it is done correctly the stitching should be parallel and it should be nice and neat yeah, well, I was off on that line right there. But the, all the others match up pretty well. Now, on the center piece at the top, you don't want to sew to the edge because you want to be able to leave room for your wire to add it to the edge of the cape. And so you need to have a channel open for that. This is what the inside of it looks like now, all sewn in nice and neat. It's clean, no glue marks. It just looks really, really nice. The edges are glued together as I did before on the prior project, and then I trimmed it off with the rotary blade that I shown earlier. Now, onto the cape install. This is what is very, very different about this cape or this install, because you're gonna have to clean up this tab at the top or part of the cowl. It's way too thick of a plastic. If you set that on top of the cape, it's just gonna look like he's got a hunchback. Now, once again, take your vice drill and drill into the back itself to anchor the wire to the figure. Now, the rubber piece that's still in this key, or part of the key, 
it's going to be tricky to push the wire in there so you want to make sure you have a clean path for the wire and this is where those pliers come in really handy if it's a nice clean path like the one on the right then the hole should just easily accept the wire and then you won't need those pliers but that's not always the case now we're going to use super glue and this is the loctite i like this because it's a gel there's no mess and so it just applies easily where you need it in the amount that you need. So once you find the wire that you want to start with, and I'm going to start with the wires in the center, only one at a time. Do not add glue to all four of them. You're going to have a mess on your hands. One wire, glue it in, wait for it to dry, then the second wire, then the third, then the fourth, all in sequence. That makes it so much easier and you'll have a cleaner product and you will have, won't have glue on your hands. Now, as I mentioned, sometimes it, it'll it actually accept the wire just fine because it's a clean path. And in the case of this one, and you'll see just a minute, I'm gonna add my glue to the end. And the reason you wanna add the glue to the end is so that it takes the glue with it into that perforation you made. If you apply the glue on top, doesn't seem to work as well. So here, it's not a clean path. And I'm having trouble inserting that. And that's where the pliers come in. And that keeps the glue away from your hands, keeps it away from the figure, and allows you to manipulate that wire. So the glue is only on the end of the wire itself. And as you can see, it's still got an obstruction there. And as soon as we have a clean path, you'll notice it, you'll feel that it's not an obstruction, and you'll see that the wire gets anchored in properly. Now when something is this small, it's gonna be tedious, it's gonna be time consuming, and it is going to, well, could drive your uh, patience up further. It's, it's gonna test you. So just take your time and be aware that you may have to attempt it one or more times for this to come out correctly. And as you already saw, it's the second cape. Sometimes I make end up making three or four capes because I ruined the installation, I ruined the stitching, or just so many things, or too many things at once. Now, once you've got it all set, then you can let it dry for an hour, depending on the glue that you used. In this case, this glue sets very quickly but at the very end, you'll want to actually glue the cape to the figure, and you'll go underneath and add your glue. You can use this same glue. I use the Fabri-Tac glue, so that takes roughly about four hours to fully dry. And then you add glue to the inside of that cowl to glue it on top of the cape. That way it looks like it's coming out from underneath the cowl. Now the glue, the Fabri-Tac glue dries clear, it doesn't have that ghostly after effect that the super glue has. And you'll have your finished product looking like this. This is the final result. I'm gonna leave you with this video now. I don't have a before because I did not video the figure before, but if you've got it, you know what it looks like. Now, if you learned something today on this video, or even if you like this figure, let me know in your comments their thoughts about this figure design and the cape that it has. And if you're looking for a particular cape, let me know ahead of time when we can make some arrangements to get one out to you. Once again, I'll leave you with the rest of this video and don't forget to keep customizing those figures. We'll see you here next time.